the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel passage on the Solemnity of Pentecost is taken from St. John. We have been reflecting on how to celebrate the actions of the Holy Spirit. And in the Gospel, we are back to Easter. The risen Lord appears to the disciples. And in that apparition, in that room where the disciples were gathered for fear of the Jews, the risen Lord breathes on them the Holy Spirit. This is an important element. The Holy Spirit, Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit is in a way the culmination of the Christ event. Some would even say that Jesus died, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven so that through His prayer and supplication, God the Father would send the Holy Spirit on the world and on us. The Holy Spirit is the gift of the risen and glorified Lord. And so we are reaching the culmination of Easter and Ascension. The peak is that the power and love of God, divine love, divine love and power is now shared with us through the Holy Spirit. And this is what we're celebrating. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the actions of the Holy Spirit as the source of energy, power and life. The Holy Spirit that gives us interior flame, warmth, purification. The Holy Spirit that gives us the capacity to proclaim Jesus in different tongues. The Holy Spirit that enables us to be people of communion, of understanding, of mutuality. Then in the second reading, the Holy Spirit that enables us to recognize Jesus as Lord in faith, the grace of faith. The Holy Spirit that enables us to speak of our faith, not just to keep our faith in our hearts. The Holy Spirit who gives different gifts, ministries, and tasks in the church. But all of those gifts are given for the common good and not for selfish gain and not for self-promotion, but the common good. So we see all of these actions of the Holy Spirit, diversity and communion. In the gospel, oh, marvelous actions of the Holy Spirit. The disciples locked themselves up in the room out of fear. When we are fearful, we lock ourselves up. And not only in a room, we lock up our hearts. We don't want to get out of our shells for fear. But maybe the disciples were also afraid due to their own guilt. It is their own guilt of having abandoned Jesus that makes them fearful, not only of the Jews, but of themselves. But in that context of fear, the risen Lord comes and breathes on them the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that would enable them to get out of their rooms, of their shells. So Jesus sends them on a mission. Mission is sending. Mission is opening the locked doors. 
mission is letting loose your true self, your faith, your proclamation. So the Holy Spirit will push them with energy and with interior purification to get out of their fears in order to proclaim the good news about Jesus. Jesus also, breathing on them the Holy Spirit, makes them experience reconciliation, forgiveness, peace. True peace is a gift of God. True peace coming from for mutual forgiveness and reconciliation can only be a gift of the Holy Spirit. So as we work for peace, we should constantly pray for the Holy Spirit's power, wind, interior flame, and also communion so that true peace could be restored. We have mentioned a lot already of the action of the Holy Spirit, and these are all the gifts of the risen Lord to us. The victory of Jesus over sin and death is now prolonged in our lives through the concrete actions of the Holy Spirit. Thanks to the Holy Spirit, we experience the victory of the risen Lord in our day-to-day -day life. I remember opening the door of mercy in the hospital. And so aside from patients, you have the family members attending the ceremony, the Mass. You could see their pain, their sorrow. I could only guess what their family members were suffering of. But part of the ceremony was our visit to the ward where HIV positive patients are being cared for. It was like entering a door, which for many would be a door of danger, of shame, of humiliation. But we opened it and we entered it bearing the mercy, the compassion of the risen Lord. And I felt, really felt, the Holy Spirit working powerfully. I saw the, some of the patients, and one of them I even spoke to, and, I, and he was crying. He was crying. And I tried to console him. And I said, keep on praying. Be strong in the Lord. But what did I get in return? He said, I'm so happy to have seen you in person. I mean, a person who has probably been humiliated even by family members now has the courage to cry tears of joy and to appreciate communion, love. That's the Holy Spirit. It could blow mightily and the face of the earth will be recreated. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.